welcome back to the shop management show where we dive deep into the world of auto repair management and everything in between i'm your host will and today we've got something truly exciting to talk about auto leaps upcoming virtual conference amplify 2024 we know you're constantly seeking ways to elevate your shop's game and that's precisely why we encourage you to mark your calendars because on February 23rd from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, AutoLeap is bringing you the number one virtual auto repair conference, Amplify 2024. And the best part of it, it's absolutely free for you to attend. Seats are filling up fast and you do not want to miss out on the auto repair event of the year. Head over to AutoLeap's website and secure your spot at Amplify 2024 today. You can find a link to register for this event directly in the show notes of this episode. I'm thrilled to be joined once again by Greg Marchand, COO at Shop Pros. Greg and I will discuss an important consideration for many successful shop owners, multi-shop expansion and management. Greg, how are you? I'm awesome, Will. How are you? I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, I'm doing great. And we are thrilled to speak to you once again on a super important topic, especially for profitable shop owners who are maybe thinking about the next evolution of their shop and how they can continue to take things to the next level. So very excited to dive into this topic with you. Let's start this conversation from the lens of a shop owner who currently has one location. They are doing extremely well. They are now feeling financially in a position to open up a second location, but they have a lot of questions about making this move. They want to make sure that they're considering every detail. Based on your experience, when is the right time for a successful shop owner to consider this type of multi-shop expansion? I think in my experience, more important than anything is when they have the management piece solved. When, when they can run an organization that is not only profitable, uh, both from a, a net profit standpoint and a growth profit standpoint, but they have, they have the skill set, they've developed the skill set to both identify and hire well and develop employees well. Uh, when things have gone awry, that is generally what I have seen. I mean, th there's a thousand other, other considerations here, of course, but, but I never, ever, ever want to advise somebody to consider even a second location, let alone four more locations, if they don't have the management skill to do so. Because anybody that's done it, will tell you it is a ball game that they never thought they were getting into. Um, and it's a, it's a constant fire drill and, and it's always around people. And so the, the multi-store location thing to me really depends on people. The money piece, I'm not pretending the money piece is easy, but if you've learned how to make money with one auto repair shop, you can, you can oftentimes do it with two if you have the right uh, answers to your question, if you will. And so Yes, you've got to have a financial piece, but I think more important than that, you've got to have the, the management skill set to be able to manage multiple store locations and identify the right people to help you do that. You cannot do that alone. I think that's a great angle and something worth considering here. You may be tempted if you're a shop owner, you see like the finances look really good and then that makes you feel well equipped. But the management and the training side, what you just discussed, I think is super important and having kind of a multifaceted approach to evaluating what position you're in and having a very thoughtful process, which we're going to talk about more today, I think is super important when you're making these types of huge decisions for your business. I agree completely. It can, it can go wrong fast if, if you're not in the right position, for sure. We've identified now some of the considerations that go into this decision. Say that a shop owner is happy with those evaluations. They're happy where their management and their training is at. They're happy with the financial picture and they are ready to move forward. What would you recommend for the research and the overall planning stages of this process? So this is, this is ridiculously important, right? And the first thing I ask somebody is, why do you want to do it? You really, really have to understand your why. I have known multi-store shop owners whose why was, I just want to say I own multiple stores. And that doesn't go well. Uh, they, you know, they, had, they had big visions. They knew multi-store shop owners. They wanted to be part of that quote-unquote club. And, and they just didn't have the skill sets that, that we're talking about, especially in terms of, of management, let alone financial security in one location. So understand your why. And, and 
to follow that, your why can be can be in different areas, right? For some multi-store shop owners, this is a real estate play. It, it's it, the shops only have to perform well enough financially to cover the mortgages and and their payroll, and they're good with that because they're big plays in real estate. And as long as the real estate's appreciating, they're going to get out of it what they want to get out of it. And so they'll go into a multi-store operation looking at things very very differently. And they'll look at They'll look at real estate, they'll look at location, they'll consider, you know, multi-use buildings. Can I, does this building have to stay an automotive repair usage or can it be, can it be a warehouse? Can it be a, a you know, divided up into rental properties, multiple, you know, we'll call them business condos. Um, and so they, the, if it's a real estate play, you're looking at this very, very differently. If today in 2024, you're looking at the massive consolidation going on in the automotive industry and say, hey, you know what? I want three or four locations because I want somebody to come by me. Then that's different, right? Um, so then, you know, location is just as important, but location in the sense of where am I going to attract car count? Who is it? What kind of visibility do I have? What purchase partner am I trying to attract here? What is, you know, what is the size of the shop that they're generally buying? Are they buying, you know, 10 to 20 locations? Are they buying two to five locations? Are they looking at four bay shops? Or are they buying 10 bay shops? And so you've really got to go into this looking at your exit strategy. What are you trying to get out of it? It's no different than any business. Start, begin with the end in mind always. And so I think that, that once you feel like you can do it, once you feel like you have the skill and you feel like the finances are there, you know, go find a mentor and, and make sure that they agree with you, but then start with what do I want out of all of this? Because that's going to dictate how many locations you're going to end up with, where they're going to be, and, and what kind of properties you're looking for. So I think to me, that's the, that's the big one after you truly feel like you're ready. Great perspective there. I really kind of like how you outlined getting down to the values of why you're actually doing this and making this move. Those core values need to be at the heart of your decision making here. A follow-up question in regards to you mentioning finding a mentor for this process. How would you recommend going about finding a mentor who has those types of qualifications? If you don't know somebody find somebody in your network. Uh, there are 20 groups out there for multi-store shop owners. There are programs out there for multi-store shop owners. Uh, I, you know, I always encourage somebody to just start asking, but ask outside your market. Because if you can find somebody outside of your market that doesn't feel threatened by you, uh, they're more than willing to help you. There are also some of these consolidators, these private equity companies out there that are, are looking, some of them are more than willing to, to you know, help you and guide you and, and tell you what they're looking for and, and where their primary market can be found. So there are places uh, to go, but I, I look within my network first, uh, ask who's doing a great job, who would you stay away from, and, and then go just see if you can't have a conversation with them and tell them what your big dream is, tell them, you know, what your exit strategy is and, and ask if they'd be willing to, willing to guide you. But 20 groups, I think, are the best. Uh, and we call them 20 groups. There's, you know, they go by different names, right? Our company calls them mastermind group. Uh, but if you can find one that's just full of multi-store shop owners, you benefit from multiple perspectives. You benefit from multiple, multiple years of experience, right? Uh, and and that's invaluable. Yeah, those are great resources to call out. That's part of due diligence with this process, right? I think checking every box. And if you're not getting outside perspective from someone who has done this before, then I think you could easily be led astray as you're completing such a huge undertaking with this process. You could be. I always in business, in any business, I want to make sure that that I'm not not just way off base. You know, you may not... You may not know whether you're wrong about something or not, because somebody may completely agree with you. The other, the other lesson I learned a long time ago is don't ever go to somebody who knows you and likes you uh, for advice, because if they know you and like you, they're never going to be honest with you in the sense that they're, they're not going to want to tell you you're a darn fool. And, and I've gone into businesses in the past because people looked at the business plan and went, yeah, man, this would be great. Go for it. And I realized two years later, as I was failing, that you know what they weren't going to tell me this sucked they weren't going to tell me they didn't want to point out real solid 
But if I went to somebody that didn't know me and had no skin in the game, they tended to be much, much more on it. Um, so you can, you know, if, if you're looking at financing this, you can go to your financial institutions and say, you know, is there anybody that, that you would consider somebody I should talk to? And, and oftentimes in the local business network, there are businesses. They don't even have to necessarily be in the automotive industry. And I know the automotive industry thinks that, you know, we're one of a kind. In a lot of ways, we are. We, we do do things uh, very specifically to our industry sometimes. But anybody that owns multiple locations of an organization, uh, you know, whether it's a, a, a florist or, or a gas station or an auto repair shop, they can point out a lot of the pitfalls. In, in owning and operating multiple locations. So I always tell people too, never be afraid to look outside the automotive industry. You can find some incredibly good business models outside of the automotive industry. But it is, it is really, really super important to go to somebody, not just that you think you can trust, but who you know will be honest with you. Because as, as you said, Will, it is part of your due diligence. And, and if, you wanna, if you wanna shortcut that, you're probably doing yourself a disservice. Know also that, just like moving your shop. I, I've been through multiple shop moves with coaching clients. And I tell them at this point, you start two years before you want to make the move. Because that first move is going to take forever. You don't know what you're doing. You've never done this before. You don't understand the commercial real estate market. You don't understand maybe the zoning in a, in a given area. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to look at a lot of properties that just are not what you're looking for and not what you want. And you're going to learn a ton. What multiple store shop owners will tell me is that first, that, that second location, right? The first new location was the hardest because they had to, they had to learn these things. Yeah, they didn't move a shop somewhere, but they, they had to learn the commercial real estate market. They had to do a lot of research, et cetera, et cetera. But then the third store, the fourth store, the fifth store, I know a gentleman in Colorado that opened the fourth and fifth store simultaneously uh, within 16 months of opening the previous two stores. The first store was, every time I saw him, he looked like he was pulling his hair out. And he said, I don't know what I'm getting into. But once he got the second store open, within within eight to 12 months, he was pretty okay with opening a third store. By the time he got the third store going, he knew what he was doing. I, I mean, at least he felt like he did. And he opened those next two, two stores simultaneously because the deal came up and he felt like he could do it. And he said it wasn't fun, but he also didn't have the same nerves as that second store that he'd opened. So it does snowball, it, it builds inertia, but that first location, start now if you're thinking about it. If, if you're really in a, in a good position to do it and you wanna get it done, start now. It's gonna take an awful lot longer than you think it's going to. Uh, and then the consecutive stores after that, they'll be much, much easier for you. That's a great example and really impressive that he was able to scale further and kind of take those mistakes that he learned and apply them forward and then really be able to scale to achieve his business dreams. That's that's a really powerful example. As a follow up there, you mentioned quite a few of the pitfalls of starting that second store. What are some of the other operational challenges that a shop owner who is opening their second location may run into initially? Yeah. So this gentleman I have in, in mind that, that owns, well, he owned five stores. The last time I saw him, he could own 10 now. I haven't, I haven't talked to him in a, a year and a half or so. But um, what I what I saw there was he had this this perfect storm of people around him. He had phenomenal people in his first location. So he had solved the management piece that we talked about earlier. And he had uh, an operation that could stand on its own. Now, this is absolutely crucial. And it doesn't matter if it's multiple stores or a single store. You need to have an, an organization. And, and a client called me one day and he says, you know what, Greg, I just had this epiphany. And he's having a lot of epiphanies. <laughs> but I, I, I said, what's that? And he says, you know, you call my, my shop an organization. And I always thought that was just a fancy word for my shop. And then I realized today that that's not what you meant. You meant that everything within my store, my shop, has to function together and that if one piece is missing then the whole thing kind of kind of tilts a little bit and, and kind of goes awry and and i said yes that's exactly what i'm talking about now if you can build a single organization that can stand on its own without you then i'd say you can consider a second location uh consolidators will say to you look the, the stores that we are looking for whether it's a single point or or 20 points 
those operations can function without the owner present. Because you know, if, if they see the owner is there every day or there six or seven days a week, heaven forbid, then they'll say, no, thank you. I don't want this because it's not a good gamble on their part. But the same reason of opening multiple stores is not a good gamble on your part if you've got one location that can't stand on its own. Uh, the, the failed multi-store owner that I, that I know that is in my mind right now, that was his challenge. He didn't have a single store that could function on its own and went and opened up a second store. Now, he made a, a few other mistakes as well. But logistically, you've got to have your, your first operation, not just you comfortable with the management, but your employees comfortable with process. You've got to have documented process, including how do we hire people? You know, the, the things that pretend you'll never be there again. Pretend you'll never, ever, ever be there again. And somebody that knows nothing about your organization is going to step in and run it. And so they've got to understand every little process, not necessarily the details of the process, but the idea behind the process. So here's how we hire people. Here's where we place the ads. Here's the uh, copy of the ads we've used in the past. Here's the, the four or five step hiring process, uh, maybe a copy of the questions we ask so that I can come walking in and go, oh, okay, I've never hired somebody, but I can follow this. And I stand a better chance at hiring somebody good. And you do that with every process in the store. Now, if the store will stand on its own without you and, and you've got the processes down, now you can go open a second location yourself. But here's a challenge. If you want more than two locations, you had better not go open the second location, in my opinion, without somebody just like you by your side. You need another operations person because if it took you, let's just say it took you seven years at a minimum, probably 17 years to get that one location solid on, on solid footing, functioning on its own, highly profitable, et cetera, et cetera. Great car count, loyal customers, all that good stuff. How long will it take you to get the second location going? There's a bunch of variables. We'll talk about those in a minute if you want to. But even if I go find a great second location that has a good, solid customer base, do I need to be in that second location every opening hour for however long? I probably do. Because the, the people in that organization, unless I already know them, and unless it's already run just like mine, there's a lot of education that's going to have to go on. And there's going to be probably a lot of hiring that's going to go on and a lot of turnover that's going to go on and, and a lot of stuff you never anticipate. Well, how long am I going to spend in that store getting that one up and running? Do I want to spend two years, three years, four years, seven years? Probably not. And so that's where a second operations person, somebody that thinks like you, that understands where you came from, understands everything you want to do is invaluable because together you can open that store and then you, the owner, have freedom to go out and look for the third location or the fourth location, et cetera, and do the things you need to do for both stores because now all of a sudden all your marketing is included in both stores. And, and you've, got, you've got banking relationships that need to be nurtured. You've got, you know, maybe you've got contractor relationships that need to be nurtured. There are things that you are uniquely qualified to do that don't involve you standing at the service counter or you, you know, working on the workflow of the repair shop. So you really do need to have, a, we we'll call them a sidekick, you know, somebody, he or she, that thinks like you, understands where you come from and can implement things just like you. It'll make that second location uh, much more easy to open. Now, if there's only two locations that's all you ever want, then great, you've got time. You can hang out in the new location for three, four, five years, whatever, as long as the first location can stand on its own. So I, I hope that kind of makes sense because your, your management is super, super important. And everybody I have ever worked with has opened multiple locations. They had their managers hired before they opened the location. And they had their managers working in the previous store or stores before they open the new location. So people are more critical than anything when you're thinking about an MSO operation. We'll be back next week with part two of our conversation with Greg on multi-location shop expansion and management.